Hi guys, it's Marika here from Lake House Vlogs and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to do another homeschool video for you and I'm going to have, uh, give you a look inside what we use for our Bible curriculum. So we are a Christian family and we actually uh, pastor a church here in our city. We planted our church probably about seven months ago, I think, um, and we are called City Arise Church. Um, and I will uh, leave a link down below if you want to go check out our website or our YouTube channel um, and just find out um, a little bit about um, who we are. So first thing, I will just show you the Bibles that we use. We do have four children ranging from... Uh, 2 to 11. So we have a 2 year old, a 4 year old, a 6 year old and an 11 year old. So we do need different resources to kind of cover um, all of those age ranges. So to start with, we do start with this, my first read aloud Bible and it just um, is like a picture storybook Bible. Um, so we start our children off with something like this just so they can start um, engaging with the Word of God and it just has really great um, pictures to help them gain an understanding. Um, so that is uh, really, really great. Um, and then after that, um, we jump into the Jesus Storybook Bible and I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Um, so we do start with this one. Um, we do have the Action Bible. This is my oldest son. I think we read this to him when he was about seven or eight. We did read the Lego Bible before that. I don't have that. I um, have lent that to someone, but that was excellent. And then we read to him um, the Action Bible. And this is excellent. I do really recommend this. It is set out um, like a comic book with really great pictures um, that my son just absolutely um, loved um, and I will show you it is the um, proper um, text um, like kind of like proper phrasing um, from the Bible and so he really enjoyed that and he um, we read the whole thing through and we would read it um, with him each night so that was excellent he really liked that now both of my older children have their own Bible each and we do have them in these covers because we do take our Bibles with us to church every week. So these covers are just great to um, protect their Bible. So my daughter who is six, she got this for her, um, I think last year when she was five, she has the um, Adventure Bible um, and um, you can see it's well used, she uses it all the time. So it does have great... Um, kind of like devotional stuff throughout the Bible, um, but it is proper Bible um, that she is using. So that is really great. She's enjoying that one. And then my son, who's 11, he has a, a standard um, NIV Bible. He did get baptised over the summer. Um, so his grandfather, as a gift, took him up to Kurong to buy him um, a proper Bible. So he has this one, and it's great because it just has all the books of the Bible in tab form there, um, and that's helping him out a great deal. So this stack of book here, books here is what we use um, pretty much daily when um, in our homeschooling. So we start off with, um, I have um, this one here, um, the beautiful word, 100 illustrated NIV scriptures to nurture your spirit. So we use this um, sweet little book for our memory verses. So um, show you. They... Um, a beautifully um, set out and it just has a kind of little um, devotional to go with it. So each week we basically we just um, open it up um, and we will look um, at the scripture that we learnt the week before and the children will uh, recite that and then we will go on to learning the next scripture and I um, will have this written up on um, their chalkboard um, for them to see and we will read it and practice reading without looking um, each day and then um, at the beginning of the week they also write it um, inside their Bible journal. I'll show you those um, in a minute. So just really simple process um, and um, we will just work through this for our memory um, verse memorizations. Okay, so the next book I have that we use is um, The Ology by Marty Murkowski. And this is really, really great. Um, it's just basically like a theology book um, for children. And I will give you a look inside. 
um, show you their contents page. Um, so it's kind of broken up um, into sections. So it has the ology of God, of people, of sin, of um, the promises and the law, of Christ. We go into the Holy Spirit and then some identity stuff. Um, the church, um, end times, and God's word. Um, and so these are great. So they um, just, oh, sorry, it was really hard to do one-handed. Okay, so um, so at this section, the ology of people. Um, so it just has um, some short text for you um, to read. It does have um, verses there on the side that you could use um, as memory verses, and we were using those as memory verses. Um, and then also it does have, if you can see here, scripture references for what they were talking about here. So what we will do is I will um, read aloud to them their section, and um, we will then get our Bibles out and we will look up these different scripture references. And so the children are um, learning to how to use their Bible, where the books are of the Bible, how to look up chapters and verses and things like that. And also just teaching them that um, we need to make sure that what we're reading does line up with the word of God. So after we have done a section in the ology, then we will do um, some notebooking pages from it. And they have um, these um, little notebooks, which are just sketchbooks that I got these from Kmart. And these are for their Bible journaling. So I do have another book um, that we use for homeschool that includes all of their subjects, like their nature notebooking, their history, writing, geography, um, and all those kind of things. But this one, they have a separate book just for their Bible journaling um, because I would like them to, um, to actually keep this. So what my daughter has just done, um, she has drawn and painted a picture and then she's written some text um, from what we were reading um, in the book. So they'll either do some copy work from what we have done um, or they'll just write um, what they have learnt. Um, we do all sorts of things um, with, with the um, Bible journals. Age again, she has um, painted a picture and she has written out her, um, her memory verse. Um, and because she's still practicing her writing, I have got her to do it on lined paper and we have stuck it in there. Um, and so um, we will do that. I think she's done that one. <laughs> she's done some upside down. Um, here is another one. So she uh, really enjoys um, doing um, Bible journaling. Um, and we try and do it um, a couple of times a week. Um, and while they are doing their Bible journals, I will also get out my Bible um, and kind of do my thing as well. So I think it's very important for our children to um, that we model things to our children. And so the children do see me uh, reading from my own uh, Bible and my own books. Um, and we also have worship time um, together as well as a family. Um, and how um, I'll explain to you how we do um, worship time um, um, as well. So I thought I would just kind of interrupt my kind of book reviews and just jump on here and show you, uh, t talk to you about how we do um, worship in our house. My backdrop isn't that pretty, but it's real life, y'all. <laughs> um, and you can probably hear my kids um, in the living room. Um, but that's okay. <laughs> so we really, really value highly worship. We love to worship God. And when we um, are at church, our children are actually with us in the service for worship time. Um, and then when the sermon starts, then they go out and have um, a class for themselves. But um, our children are involved in worship. Um, and we... Um, play worship music all the time in our home we sing along as we're going about our day we have it in the car um, so my children are very much exposed um, to worshiping God um, and also not necessarily children's worship songs they will be the worship songs that I listen to um, and my children actually um, really enjoy worshiping and they will um, sing those songs even when they're not playing my especially my daughter um, just absolutely loves it and so for uh, worship time at home um oh my toddler's knocking just give me a second so what we do for family worship is I will um, pop a worship video up on the tv um so it'll either be um um like a worship um 
set um, that's on YouTube um, or we will um, the children will choose there's lots of different um, <laughs> There's lots of different videos on YouTube that are absolutely fantastic um, and we watch a lot of Bethel TV um, and uh, Life Tree Kids, um, all, all sorts of things and so some of our favourite ones I will link down below so that you can go and have a look at what we, <laughs> can you hear? Jackson at the door. <laughs> I will pop those links down below so that you can um, have a look and just go have a look at the videos for yourself and what we will do is we'll put those videos on and everybody joins in. Um, we will um, we will stand and sing them or we will sit and sing them or we will lay down and just have them um, listen to the words being sung over them and kind of soak um, in that beautiful atmosphere. We dance. Um, my daughter has a worship flag. Um, we, we, you know, we just kind of do what we are feeling um, in the moment, and that's just um, that's how you worship God. It's full of joy um, and fun, um, and then sometimes it is just soaking and listening to those words kind of go um, be sung over you and get into your spirit. So we love worship in our house. And so go check out those videos, um, and you can have a, a kind of an idea of the things that we are using. So that is the ology and the Bible journals um, and then we also read um, aloud from the Jesus Storybook Bible and this is my absolutely favourite, favourite Bible for kids. I highly recommend this book. I wish I had got it sooner. Um, so it um, tells all of the stories from the very beginning right through um, from the Bible but what is unique, sorry guys, what is unique um, about this particular book is it just really reveals the heart of God in everything um, that he was doing and it all points back to Jesus. So for example, um, this is the at the very beginning with the story of um, Adam and Eve and how they had to leave the garden. And reading these, um, you know, to your children is quite hard for them to understand. You know, we talk about how God is this amazing, loving God, yet he threw um, his children out of the garden. And it is really hard for them to understand. And you can kind of get caught up in, wow, God is so angry with us and he's so distant. Um, but really, it's not the truth. And what I love about this Bible is it just kind of brings it back at the end of the story. Look, this is actually um, why God did this. It, it's actually because he, um, he loves us and he has a rescue plan for us. So, um, for example, at the end here, it says, you know, but before they left the garden, God made clothes for his children to cover them. He gently clothed them and then he sent them away on a long, long journey out of the garden, out of their home. Well, in another story, it would be all over and that would be the end. And then this is the bit that I absolutely love, but not in this story. God loved his children too much to let the story end there. Even though he knew he would suffer, God had a plan, a magnificent dream. One day he would get his children back. One day he would make the world, their world, perfect home again. And one day he would wipe away every tear from their eyes. You see, no matter what, in spite of everything, God would love his children with a never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love. And though they would forget him and run away from him, deep in their hearts, God's children would miss him always and long for him. Lost children yearning for their home. Before they left the garden, God whispered a promise to Adam and Eve. It will not always be so. I will come to rescue you. And when I do, I'm going to do battle against the snake. I'll get rid of sin and the dark and the sadness you let in here. I'm coming back for you. And he would. One day, God himself would come. I mean, that just absolutely wrecked me. I just remember reading this to my kids and just, you know, welling up with tears of like, this is who God is. This is my Papa God. He loves his children with this fierce, fierce love. You know, this never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love. And so I just love how, you know, it presents them the story. This is actually what happened. And this is why they had to leave, you know, um, and kind of ties it back up that God, um, you know, fiercely loves us and he would come for us, you know, one day and he will send Jesus to rescue us. Um, and so... Oh my gosh, I absolutely love this. And, and it's true, every time I read this um, to my children, I get wrecked in some kind of way and just get overwhelmed um, with God's love for me. It is so, so good. So, 
you know, run, don't walk. If you do not have this Bible, run, don't walk, go out and purchase yourself, yourself a copy. You won't regret it. Another book that we do that I highly recommend is this one. It's called Eyes at Sea and Ears at Hear um, by Jennifer Toledo. And the little front there says, it's a parent's guide to teaching their children how to hear the voice of God. Um, and this is excellent. I will uh, definitely link this down below for you because it's not available in too many um, places. Um, I bought this back from the States when I was there. But this is really, really great. This is teaching children um, how to hear um, the voice of God for themselves. You know, the, there's no, you know, junior Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is for everybody. The same Holy Spirit that speaks to me also, you know, speaks to my children. And this is a really great book on um, teaching them um, how to um, hear God. And so I'll just show you. Um, so it goes through... Um, goes through um, talking about it. They'll have activations and then also um, prayers for you to do with your children. So let me just show you what we were um, doing today. Um, so today we were um, um, asking God to speak to us and the book gave us a question to ask God. Um, and then we were quiet and still and listened for what God was showing us or saying to us. And then the children shared. And it's amazing. They, they are listening and hearing God. And so what we did is... Uh, we, I wrote out for, this is my daughter, I wrote out for her what she said and she just drew a picture. So she's, she, had, this is what she asked God. She asked God, um, what game would you like to play with me? And Emily saw um, immediately emoji, you know. And then she asked God, why um, would you play that game with me? And what she felt that he said to her was, um, because I know that you like, you know. And so, you know, this is really, really simple and really basic, but it's just um, teaching her how to hear God's voice and, and and this is exactly what he would say, you know, you know, he loves Emily and she know he knows that she loves to play, you know. So of course that would be the game that he would play with her. Um and so this book is excellent and even for adults who um are struggling with hearing the voice of God, it is so simple um and so easy to follow. It's amazing. You have to get your hands a hold of this and and so um this is, you know, taught with conjunction with reading our bibles because you know you have to know the the word of god um so that all of this lines up with that if you don't know the word of god and you don't have that kind of hidden in your heart um then you won't be able to discern what's god's voice and what's the enemy's voice and what's your voice so this book definitely goes along with teaching our children about you know the nature of god um and you know all the theology stuff and reading our bibles but this is excellent and i do recommend this one as well this is something that i do um with my older son my older son has just turned um 11 um and we have these um books um by robert sled and these are um, history books of the great revivalists and so originally um, we I've lost the, the dust jacket um, for this one um, this is God's Generals um, by Robert Leiden um, and this is um, an excellent book that my oh it's upside down please forgive me um, this is a book um, that my husband and I um, have read um, so it's talking about you know famous past revivalists why they succeed and why some um, failed um, and this is I absolutely love this book it is a really thick book um, but I read this just in a couple of days this is really right up my alley I love history books and um, particularly about um, great revivalists and so here is some of the authors We've got John Alexander Dowie, Marie Woodworth Edda, Evan Roberts William J. Seymour, John G. Lake, Smith Wigglesworth, Amy Semple McPherson, Catherine Corman, um, and it goes um, on and on and on. I think there is um, there is the 11. And it just tells um, the stories um, of these amazing people um, where they um, started and the amazing things that they did um, in their ministry. Um, and also, you know, sometimes towards the end they didn't quite... Uh, finish out spectacularly and it even includes kind of what happened and why you know things kind of went wrong in the end and I think it's really great to include those kind of things so we can um, you know we always want to learn from other people from the good the bad and the ugly and so this is really really great another great book if you're interested 
um, in things like that. And so um, they do have these volumes for children. So this is God's Generals for Children. It's just one person um, in the book. So this one is John G. Lake. Um, and it is just set out um, for kids to be able to read, um, obviously, bigger text um, and simpler um, simpler um, words for them to read. And so I bought um, this for my son. Now, obviously, in this book, there was 12. Um, and so this one only has one. And so I thought I would get the kids um, ones for William. So I bought this book and I gave it to him and he handed it back to me the next day. He had devoured it. He had already read it in one day. So I thought to myself, well, I'm not going to go and buy 12 volumes of this book if he read this so easily and he understood he narrated back to me and he knew everything about John G. Lake it was incredible it has just really captured my son's attention and so what we decided to do instead of just getting all of the kids versions um, he's actually just reading this one and so um, what we do um, with this one obviously he could read that one himself um, but with this one I am actually reading it um, allowed to him so I will read a section um, and then he'll narrate back to me um, what he has um, learnt and sometimes we'll also write about it as well um, so for example this is his bible journal and this is when we were reading about Evan Roberts and these were just some of the key points that um, stood out to him um, and so he would write about that um, in his journal and so yeah this is really great this is not something that I do with my daughter who is six this is just for my son um, who is 11 um, and as I said he is really really enjoying um enjoying um, hearing these stories and also there are YouTube videos um, as well from Robert Sladen um, about all of the generals um, and so I will link them um, down below as well so once he has read um, a chapter of a person from here then we will go um, and um, watch the YouTube video as well. So there you have it. They're all the resources that we are using. Um, where I can, I will put links down below for you so you can go um, and check out those resources for yourself. Thank you for watching my video today and I will see you next time. Bye.